Kassam Nabil. Today I will talk about spleen sonography. Let's begin with anatomical and physiological review. So the spleen is below the diaphragm on the left side. Actually, it's under the ribs, specifically between ribs 9 and 11. The spleen is an intraperitoneal organ, not a retroperitoneal organ. It lies on the left upper quadrant below the diaphragm. The spleen arterial supply is with the splenic artery, which is a tortuous artery, comes directly from the celiac trunk. And the spleen drains into the splenic vein, which joins the inferior mesenteric vein and superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. And remember, the portal vein goes to the liver. More precisely, the spleen is located posterior to the stomach and anterior to the left hemidiaphragm at the level of ribs 9, 10, and 11. Medial to the spleen is the left kidney, superior is the diaphragm, while inferiorly it rests directly on the left colic flexure, the splenic flexure. Let us also not forget that the tail of the pancreas tickles the spleen at the level of the hilum. The hilum is where the vessels of the spleen go in and out of the spleen. The dimensions of the spleen, the spleen is about 5 inches high, which is about 12 to 13 centimeters, and about 3 inches width, which is about 7 to 8 centimeters, and 1 inch thickness, which is about 2.5 centimeters. The weight of the spleen is about 200 grams. The spleen tissue is composed of white bulb and red bulb. The white bulb is forming 25% of the spleen and it plays the lymphatic and immune role of the spleen. The red bulb forms the rest 75% of the spleen and it's responsible for recycling of the RBCs. So let's talk about the sonographic technique of the spleen. All routine abdominal sonographic examination, regardless of the indications, should include at least one coronal view of the spleen and the upper pool of the left kidney. The most common and easy approach to visualize the spleen is to maintain the patient in supine position, uh, although we can scan the patient on the left lateral decubitus, it's much easier, and place the transducer in the coronal plane of section uh, posteriorly in one of the lower left intercostal spaces. The patient can be then uh, examined in various degrees of inspiration to maximize the window of the spleen. But we have to notice that deep inspiration could introduce more air into the lungs and the lateral costophrenic angle may obscure visualization. The plane of section should be swept anteriorly and posteriorly to view the entire volume of the spleen. We generally find that a through examination in the coronal plane of section is highly accurate for excluding any lesion within or around the spleen and for documenting the spleen's approximate size. If an abnormality is discovered within or around the spleen, other planes of sections should be used. An oblique plane of section along the intercostal space can avoid rib shadowing. In some patients with narrow intercostal spaces, however, intercostal scanning can be difficult. A transverse plane from a lateral uh, usually intercostal approach may help to localize a lesion within the spleen anteriorly or posteriorly. While scanning, it's important to note the adjacent structures around the spleen. Here on the longitudinal scan, the, here is the diaphragm, which is represented by the right echogenic line here, and the pleural space. Here is a part of the bowel loop and here will appear part of the kidney of the left kidney 
in the transverse section some of the rib shadowing can appear at this area here uh, this is a part of the bowel loop and also if the section is uh, a little bit bigger the transverse left kidney should be appear at this area here the spleen sonographic appearance is homogeneous moderately echogenic less visible vessels than the liver the spleen echogenicity is slightly more than the liver the spleen is more echogenic than the liver uh, it could be equal or less than the pancreas and more echogenic than the renal cortex so let's talk about the measurements of the spleen sonographic measurements of the spleen uh, we do three we, t we do have three calibers the longitudinal diameter the transverse diameter and the thickness or the diagonal diameter so when we take the, the, the longitudinal diameter which is the greatest dimension of the spleen uh, we, we have to notice that the plane of the measurement goes through the hilum and through the parenchyma. We have to notice that the caliber or the plane of, of measurement does not go out of the parenchyma of the, of the spleen. When we take the transverse diameter, we have to adjust the image plane at the level of the hilum so that we have the greatest dimension of the transverse section. Diagonal diameter or the thickness is measured in the transverse image through the hilum as the distance from the hilum to the outer cortex surface approximately perpendicular to the transverse diameter. There are some splenic variants that could be detected on ultrasound examination. One of them is accessory spleens or splenules. Uh, splenules are estimated in ultrasound examinations in almost 20% uh, of the cases. Uh, it, uh, the accessory spleen are usually found in the region of the tail of the pancreas at the hilum and they may stimulate a tumor or mimic a tumor on ultrasound scanning. And this, under these circumstances, uh, technetium sulfur colloid scan could be particularly beneficial uh, since the uptake of colloid indicates that the mass has phagocytic activity and therefore it's an accessory spleen and it's not a tumor. Another variant of the spleen is called splenosis. Splenosis after splenectomy, hypertrophy of a splenic remnant may lead to a recurrent of the spleen. This phenomenon is called a born again spleen the splenic nodule is usually less than 5 cm, rounded and has the same echogenic properties of a normal spleen. One most are located in the left upper quadrant. Uh, a technetium scan also can confirm the splenic tissue. Also, a spontaneous transplantation of a splenic tissue to unusual sites after, after splenic trauma or rupture could happen. Nodules of ectopic splenic tissue develop in peritoneal or mental mesenteric surfaces similar to endometriosis deposits. Another variant called a wandering spleen. A wandering spleen is called also a floating or ectopic spleen. Spleen may be attached by a long pedicle of peritoneum arising from the original spirenrenal ligament. This long pedicle permits movement of the spleen into the abdominal and pelvic areas. Torsion of the spleen on the pedicle may cause severe pain and infarction. The wandering spleen is supplied by the splenic artery and drained by the splenic vein. A sonographic diagnosis of wandering spleen should be considered whenever there is the presence of a solid mass in the abdomen and the pelvis and echoes are absent from the normal location of the spleen. The spleen may be identified by ultrasound, CT, or technetium studies. Also, there is rub around liver. The left lobe of the liver may be exceptionally elongated and intervene between the diaphragm and the superior lateral aspect of the spleen. The portion of the liver 
is less echogenic than the spleen and can simulate a subcapsular hematoma. So Doppler scan can confirm either is this a tissue or a hematoma. Let's talk about the pathologic conditions. First of all, we have to talk about splenomegaly. The differential diagnosis of splenomegaly is exceedingly long. Causes of splenomegaly could be hematologic causes like red blood cell membrane defects or autoimmune hemolytic anemias. It could be also a rheumatologic causes just like rheumatoid arthritis and sarcoidosis. Infectious diseases also could cause splenomegaly, either virus, bacterial, or mycobacteria, or fungal, uh, or even parasites like malaria. Also, we have congestive diseases like hepatic cirrhosis, portal hypertension, uh, venous thrombosis, hepatic portal or splenic venous thrombosis, and also congestive heart failure. Let us talk about spleen ultrasound in trauma. The sonographic findings in splenic trauma are variable. If the splenic capsule is intact, if there is a subcapsular hematoma, it may be seen as a peripheral crescent-shaped collection. If the spleen is lacerated, a hemoproteinium will occur, which may be isolated to the left upper quadrant or extend to the other proteinial compartments, including the paracolic gutters, pelvis, and right side. The intraparenchymal hematoma appears hyperechoic within 24 hours of the event. During resorption, it becomes hypoechoic or echo-free. Hematoma may return to normal or heal with an echogenic linear scar or remain as a cyst with thick fibrotic and sometimes calcified walls. The post-traumatic cysts are the most common cystic lesions of the spleen. They may be called pseudocysts because they do not have a cellular lining and the intrasplenic hematomas can take months to resolve. In this case, we have subcapsular hematoma. This is a longitudinal transverse sections revealed a subcapsular splenic hematoma. Less echogenicity than the true splenic tissue. This image revealed the splenic fracture. There is a hypoechoic line goes through the, the splenic parenchyma, separates the normal parenchyma from each other. Cystic splenic masses could include primary simple cyst, which is rare, uh, hemorrhagic cyst, hematoma, abscess, pseudocyst, splenic artery aneurysm, and pseudoaneurysm, and cystic metastasis. So when we talk about the true cyst, true simple cyst of the spleen, which is rare, uh, there will be uh, an echoic, well subscribed cystic lesion within the splenic parenchyma with no doubler signal. Pseudocyst could be an old hematoma or an old hemorrhagic cyst. Sometimes it have calcification, just like this case here. Yeah. We have wall calcification of the cyst. This is a pseudocyst of the spleen. So when we talk about splenic infected cyst or abscesses, here is splenic abscess showing internal echogenic debris and fluid fluid level. Pyogenic abscess sonographically have a wide range of appearances. They are often mixed lesions which are similar to liquefying hematomas. Sometimes they could be echo-free or they could have low levels of internal echoes septations or highly reflective gas or air bubbles. Also, we have the fungal abscess, which could be represented in ultrasound image as small hypoechoic focal spots uh, spread throughout the spleen. Microabscesses 
develop most often in the spleen of a immunocompromised patients, like AIDS and leukemia patients. Sonographically, the spleen is filled with multiple anechoic or hypoechoic lesions less than 10 mm in size. Equinococcal cysts or hydatid cysts are parasitic cysts that most often involve the liver and may also involve the spleen. They could have multiple appearances such like mother-daughter cyst appearance, a cyst with multiple septations, a cyst with a detached wall, or a calcified wall cyst. Those images show uh, different cases of splenic artery aneurysms. Here in, the, in this cover, Doppler, we show the yin yang sign of the aneurysmal dilatation of the splenic artery. And here in the 2D image, we have a thrombosed aneurysm of the splenic artery. Granulomas are masses of nodular granulation tissue resulting from inflammatory injury or infection. Histoplasmosis and tuberculosis are the most common infections resulting in splenic granulomas. They appear on ultrasound as hyperechoic foci with tiny black shadow. Also we have gamma Gandhi bodies, which is echogenic foci with no shadowing, um, mainly consist of nodules of fibrous tissue with iron and calcium salts or healed focal hemorrhages and necrosis. The most common cause of gamma Gandhi bodies is portal hypertension due to elevation of venous pressure. The small venules in the spleen start to rupture and, and the process of rupture and healing of small vessels will form the gamma Gandhi bodies. Other causes of gamma Gandhi bodies in spleen are sickle cell anemia, uh, angiosarcomas, acquired hemochromatosis, and leukemia. Infections are caused either by septic emboli or thrombosis in the patients with bacterial endocarditis. Hemolytic anemias, arthritis, pancreatic carcinoma, leukemia, and polycythemia. Graphically, fresh infarcts are well-defined hypoechoic wedge-shaped focal lesion. Splenic hemangiomas are rare, unlike in liver. Typical hyperechoic masses may have variable features. They could be hypoechoic, and spleen size is usually normal. Splenic hamartoma are a benign primary neoplasm of the spleen. The sonographic features of splenic hamartoma is mixed echogenicity with hypervascularity. Lymphomas of spleen could be diffuse or focal, single or multiple, hypoechoic or hyperechoic masses, and may be associated with splenic hyalur lymphadenopathy. Metastasis to the spleen is a late phenomenon rather than a presenting feature. Splenic metastases are most often associated with malignant melanoma, lymphoma, and leukemia. But they can also be associated with carcinomas of the breast, ovary, lung, and stomach. Sonographically, the lesions are variable and non-specific, solitary or multiple, hypoechoic, hyperechoic, mixed, or partially cystic. Thank you for your attention. I hope the tutorial was informative.